Hi, thank you for joining me for another process video. And today I'm going to be working with mixed media to create my background. The photo that I'm documenting is of my daughter singing with the Butler Tonics, which is the school a cappella singing group back in 2019 at their school um, rewards ceremony at the local parish church. So I pulled out five Distress Oxide inks, which match most closely to the photos that I can see in my photo, sorry, the colors that I can see in my photo. And um, I've just pulled those down the page and now I'm smearing them about with some water to oxidise them and also create more of a watercolour look. So the red that I've got there on the left hand side is lumberjack plaid. Then we've got scattered straw, then fossilised amber. The green is mowed lawn and then the blue is uncharted, uncharted mariner. So first of all, I was just going to smear these down the page, but then I decided that I wanted to add some splatters at either end. So I'm just using my hand as a shield. So first of all, um, smudging the ink about with my wet paintbrush, wetting the brush again, and then using what's the residual ink on my paintbrush to splatter and just shielding the previous or next color with my hand so that it doesn't, the splatters don't go too far. <laughs> So there we go. So I'm just going to blot up the excess water with this very dirty kitchen towel that I use for wiping off my brushes. Um, and you can see how beautifully it's oxidising and blooming there. And then I'm coming in with my new darkroom door stamp that you will have seen me using last week. I love this stamp. It's like a herringbone chevron. And I'm using the same ink on each of the strips. So that first one I use lumberjack plaid and then on the second one I'm using the, I said scattered straw, I think it's antique linen actually, antique linen and um, just going through, yes it is antique linen, going through and each time I'm rotating the stamp through 180 degrees. So the chevrons point up on the first one, down on the second one and so on and so forth. So once this is all done, I'm just going in with the green now. I'm going to work with Vicky Booten's print shop because I thought the colours would go nicely with this photo um, to mat the photo. So I pull out the, I've got a tub full of the ephemera and papyri pieces and that's what I predominantly use to mat my photo. I haven't actually used any pattern paper on this one. So that's the last strip there. And then I can start embellishing that photo. So just moving it to one side so I can keep an eye on the colours and having a look to see what we've got here. So just digging my way through. <laughs> and I do love these bigger pieces that you get to use as photo mats. So just having a look to see what's there. First of all, I think about using this piece. I love those um, circles that have been punched out of it. This one definitely works because you've got the tab at the top already made to put the date. But I switched that blue one out for the bingo card because I think um, that will work really nicely. I like the texture at the end that's going to peek through. Tags are always brilliant for adding interest because I can bring some wax twine in. And I'm just layering up and deciding what to do before I glue all this down. So that's my stack. And now I'm just going to stick it down with my sticks to tape runner. So just checking the positioning before I go in with the glue. Checking that I've covered all of those bingo bits. <laughs> so you can't tell it's a bingo card, just looks like a nice textured paper. And that label tag. In this piece I can't quite decide how to do it but in the end I flip it over and hide those lovely circles. Oh sorry it's um hidden underneath the rest of the mat. I have it showing at the top rather than at the bottom. So I'm just going to add my date with my black archival ink just creating a couple of stamps there. I like the shadowing of the second stamp impression. And now you can see I've just tucked down a little fountain pen to the left there. And then this is going to be my journaling spot. So just working out how that's going to go. And then add my journaling. So I've just put year eight and Amelia sang with Butler Tonics at the awards ceremony at St Elphin's Church. So 
so it's just documenting where we were and what age she was. So just wanted something else to tuck in. I felt like that journaling block was a little bit too low um, without anything next to it as a step. So I'm just bringing in that other card here, but I don't need to use the whole thing. So cut it in half, half at the bottom here and then half at the top behind that um, date tab. So just getting those glued down with my wet glue. Now I wanted to bring a few more bits in. So I found a bulldog clip on the sticker sheet. Vicky Booten's brilliant for bulldog clips. You can always find one if you want one on your layouts. <laughs> and that just brings a little bit more height to the left-hand side of that photo as well. So it balances against the bottom right being lower. And then this sticker says something awesome and then a yellow one that says take a deep breath because she was rather nervous. So adding some wax twine, as I said, to this tag. I'm not quite sure what to do with the ends yet, so I just leave them trailing for now. And now I can stick this whole mat down. And these papers are very delicate, so I just have to be a bit careful when I'm dragging my tape runner. You can see there I wrinkled a bit at the bottom, but it'll all flatten out. So this title comes from the Fernwood collection but I just spotted it on the chipboard sheet as I was looking for something else and thought that would work really nicely so I'm going to use my title as beautiful singing but first of all coming in with some of my um, whole reinforcers in black just to dot the black around the page and once I've done that I'll also use my Nouveau crystal drops in black to add a bit more black in a different size and shape but I want to add the second part of my title so I'm going to first of all check that that's straight and then I can glue it down. It is adhesive chipboard, but adhesive chipboard never sticks and particularly when you've got mixed media behind. So easier just to use some wet glue to ensure a good adhesion. And then sticking these whole reinforcers down. And then, as I say, I'm going to come in with the word singing underneath that title, beautiful. And I'm using my Florence alphabets in black. I love those alphabets. You'll be seeing them used an awful lot <laughs> over the coming months. We stock them at Hey Little Magpie now as well. So deciding that this um, wax twine is going to be tucked just underneath that washer, the whole reinforcer there, and trimming off the ends. And here I am with that final part of the title. So I'm starting with the G and working backwards because I wanted to make sure that that was where the word ended didn't really matter where it began. So that was the best way to do it. And then adding one of the little black hearts that are on that sticker sheet. Those Florence alphabets are fabulous. So here I am now with my Nuvo crystal drops in ebony black and just adding dots about the page to finish off. And I think that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed this process video. Something a little bit different again from me. I'm enjoying playing with different techniques and trying new ideas. Do let me know if there's anything that you want to see or if you've got any questions about this. Other than that, I shall see you very soon. Thanks again. Bye.